I've been aquascaping for more than 15 years now. And I've been lucky enough to learn from the best underwater layout creators in the world. We've been lucky enough to have this platform with many wonderful people supporting us with their feedback in the comments. Believe it or not, it is a very rare and unique event when we need to hide a comment from the channel. And that is about crypto, probably. <laughs> I understand that if you're new to this channel and you just shuffled through a couple of our recent videos, you might feel overwhelmed by the amount of information or might feel an outsider cringing at the insider jokes uh, that I make and feeling lost by the ever-increasing number of the videos posted. At this moment, we have almost half a million subscribers who support us in many ways by watching our videos, by becoming channel members, or by buying aquarium-related goods from a web shop, greenaqua.com. <laughs> yeah, this was a shameless plug, right? <laughs> in the name of our team, I wish to thank you for all the support. However, regardless of uh, your aquascaping experience, this video is meant to be a guide to our ever-growing channel, and hopefully it will help you navigate the rich content that we already have uploaded. Let this be an introduction that came too late, a so-called table of content to our channel. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Welcome to Green Aqua. Throughout the 15 years in the aquascaping hobby, I've been lucky enough to have the best aquarium equipment at my disposal with a huge variety of plants, fish, decoration, and the assistance of a wonderful team who not only physically helped me build the tanks, but have given me countless good advice and honest feedback with regards of my layouts. What more can one expect in this hobby? I've been thinking about this a lot. How did I become a better aquascaper throughout the years? Being a green aqua founder, was it the financial background available to me when I made these builds? Or was it the guidance I got from our lovely team members? Or the quality of the big external filters we have, the usage of pressurized CO2 injection, beautiful color spectrum RGB LED lights, the good quality soil, the nearly unlimited number of plants? Did all these fortunate circumstances ultimately lead me to the uh, creation of these beautiful layouts? Of course not. While I'm grateful for all these, I strongly believe that I did not get here because of these resources that were available to me. Okay, so how did I get here? And how can you get more joy and creative fulfillment from aquascaping? I touched on this subject in the Psychology of Aquascaping video before. I'm gonna link that in the description. But that is a more theoretical presentation and this is a more practical guide. I will attempt to outline one possible script to successful aquascaping. I don't like the word successful too much, so let's just use fulfilling instead, or let's call this a recipe for the aquascaping soup. <laughs> Please understand that this is my way of structuring things. There are many ways to successfully pursue this hobby. I know though that we share the same way of thinking with many of my aquascaper friends from all over the world, but there are many, many paths. So I'll tell you my story, hope you'll like it. Now here comes the number one reason. I feel I got a lot better in the 15 years I spent with aquascaping because of the repetitive nature of our planted tank creation process, because of the experience I gained. Please note that I did not talk about my knowledge or my creative skills here just about the experience. Hundreds of aquariums that I built. My first aquarium was probably, surely way worse than uh, your first creation. I'm sure of that. The initial failure to create a sustainable and beautiful underwater world for my little daughter made me want to learn more about this hobby. To learn aquascaping is a surprisingly short process. It is easy. And it is even shorter today than 15 years ago when I started my journey. If you are new to the hobby, please appreciate that you have all the necessary info available for free through YouTube videos made by talented creators, 
hopefully our videos are included in that great blogs podcasts books aquascaping contests forums and local aquarium clubs so i made a new playlist for you it contains a short list of essential videos that will touch on all the key subjects of planted tanks the playlist order matters the order in which the videos are listed in that playlist if you're new to the channel please start with the first video and binge watch as many as you can i promise that by the end of a long and revelational video watching weekend you'll know more about aquascaping than you'll ever need you'll learn about aquascaping in general about creativity about lights filtration carbon dioxide soils plants fish algae maintenance and even the budget needed this is supposed to be a great little starting point in the hobby if that information provided in this playlist is not enough for you we have a longer playlist with about 100 tutorial videos that is sick but it could be overwhelming for most who just arrived here some topics that uh, we're talking about and are not included in the start here playlist in no particular order are reverse osmosis systems tips and tricks setting up a co2 system co2 reactors how to install aquarium equipment how to prevent fish from jumping out aquarium automation computers and dozers building layouts for contests and making photos of uh, of your contest tank as well as different showcases of maintenance and planted tank setup processes so the playlist this one starts with this very video the introduction then we go deeper into the psychological background of aquascaping the video that i mentioned before and uh, how this hobby will help you cope with the stress and disconnect you from everyday problems through getting you into a state of mind called flow i believe it is very important for all of us to be conscious of our feelings to know why we do what we do and uh, what are the psychological obstacles that we face in our everyday activities i consider this topic very important hence i put it at the beginning of this playlist in the next step you learn about the basics of planted tanks this is a very short video under three minutes summarizing the seven easy steps you might want to take in order to have an edgy free and really cool aquascape these are one good filtration two co2 injection three strong lighting four water quality and temperature five proper plant fertilizing plant care six usage of algae eaters and seven aquarium maintenance we have a separate playlist for aquarium maintenance actually the next video would be a beginner's guide where i elaborate on the seven steps summarized previously but i'm adding three more steps number eight good quality soil number nine plant heavily from day one and number 10 do not overpopulate with fish so these were the three points i added once you know these 10 basic elements of all planted tanks you can move on learning about each one of them in detail let's have 12 chapters in total in this video chapter one filtration as you watch the playlist videos in order you'll continue with the two filter guide videos the key to a stable ecosystem is good quality filtration you'll learn about the importance of external filters about the biology of a planted tank most beginners do not understand that it is imperative to decompose the rotting organic material in the aquarium fish are swimming in their own toilet in a small space like an aquarium that will quickly become a huge issue I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but you must add the surface skimmer to your tank. I would consider that part of the filtration because you need to keep the water surface clean to ensure proper gas exchange. Chapter 2 CO2 and plant fertilizing. We have a hands on CO2 system assembly video and the general CO2 and plants fertilizing video in this section. We're all carbon based living creatures and we all know from biology class that most of our body is composed of carbon besides water. Plants will uptake carbon dioxide in order to photosynthesize. If you see a huge tree that grew out of a small plantlet in your garden 20 years ago, 
What is that made of? Did it build itself by taking the building materials from the soil? If so, how come there's soil left beneath? I suppose there would be a hole underneath the tree <laughs> if it would take up all the stuff from the ground, right? Well, actually, huge trees are made out of air. How amazing is this? They would uptake the carbon from the carbon dioxide to be found in air and would build a different, smaller or bigger structures based on their DNA, creating this wonderful variety of nature around us. Fascinating. Aquatic plants, similar to their terrestrial buddies, also need CO2. Problem is that in our aquariums, there's not enough CO2 in the water. So we need to provide that for our plants. Once you learned about all these topics, it's time to move on and learn about plant fertilizing. We have a long and detailed video next, the fertilizing masterclass explaining the different methods. There are two approaches to this, the lean type fertilizing and the rich type fertilizing. And I'm explaining that in that video. This is a somewhat complicated topic, so the video is longer, almost 40 minutes, but you can skip it and just buy a good starter kit and you'll be fine. So let's move on to the next chapter, chapter three, lighting. That is an aquarium tech that has evolved the most in the previous years. So I have included an older and a newer video in the topic. All you need to know is that if you have CO2 injection in your planted tank, you can afford to have a stronger lighting because ideally you won't have algae due to strong lighting. The visual appeal of your planted tank will be much, much higher. You can afford yourself to have a very strong visual. Chapter four, placing the equipment. Now that you have everything, you'll need to support your underwater ecosystem. We'll explain to you where to place the filter in and outflows. Actually, Tommy's gonna do that. The CO2 diffuser in order for the whole equipment to work properly. Chapter five, soils, substrates, and sand. We'll have one 20 minute video on the topic. You will know everything about what you want to use at the bottom of the aquariums from, from this. I put sand here in this chapter, although it's somehow connected to hardscape because like it's a visual element in your tank. So the next chapter is the hardscape, chapter six, which also includes creativity. We call hardscape anything that goes into the aquarium as a decoration. There are two things. There would be wood and rocks in your tank, or a sunken ship, or a plastic dry diver. <laughs> Please, if you made it this far in this video, try to avoid uh, sunken castles or stuff like this in your tank. <laughs> I just, I'm just, no comment. Placing hardscape in the aquarium is a creative process. This whole channel is about that. You can watch hundreds of videos of us or of our distinguished guests building layouts while we explain why we do what we do. I'm sure you'll come back to this topic by looking for inspiration later on, but I have included a basic hardscape tutorial in this playlist, as well as two videos on creativity and layout composition. Chapter seven, water quality and temperature. I just realized this chapter is missing. We need a separate video, Aaron. So I'm gonna include that later in this playlist. I'm talking about it in the CO2 section briefly, and I'm mentioning the topics in many videos. Plants and planting tutorials. There are three videos on aquarium plants and on how to place them in your aquascape. Please try not to be overwhelmed by the avalanche of Latin names you're being bombarded here with. You'll learn the basics with time. Plants can be configurized by their sizes or their placements. The main categories are foreground plants, mid-ground plants, and background plants. Obviously, foreground plants are smaller, background plants are bigger, mid-ground plants are in between. Additionally, we're talking about epiphyte plants, those that, that grow on wood and rocks. We're talking about stem plants here that usually go to the background because they tend to grow higher and are really fast growers. And we're talking about mosses as a separate category. So that's plants in a nutshell. Chapter nine, planted aquarium fish. 
I added just four videos on this huge topic in the playlist, but it's good to know that we consider a nature aquarium as a full ecosystem where the plants, fish, and hardscape play an equal role to complete each other. It is important not to overpopulate, to, to help the filtration do its job, and it's important to take care of the health of your living creatures. Hence the very detailed fish diseases video on this list, where I'm talking with a veterinarian, Martin Hoichi, great guy, watch that video. And the last video of this chapter is about algae eaters, which leads us to chapter 10, algae guides. The evil of all evils, algae, makes the aquarium look dirty and ugly. Usually when there's algae, there are fish problems too. It is always better to create conditions under which algae has no chance to bloom in our planted tanks. So taking care of the things you learned in the previous chapters will prevent you from engaging into an algae fight. But if you do have to, these videos will certainly help. Good luck with that, fighters. Chapter 11, bankruptcy. Oh no, <laughs> you don't have to fight for bankruptcy if you decide to have a planted tank of your own. We have two shopping guides and a great website where you can plan it all. I intend to do further videos on the budget and on the financial considerations as I believe this is an important and often limiting topics. Chapter 12, maintenance. This is the last chapter. It is a huge topic. We have a separate playlist, as I mentioned before, on just maintenance videos, but I have included two of the most relevant ones, perhaps. And by the end of the now 30 video playlist, you get a bonus inspirational boost from the aquascaping world champion, Josh Sim, showing us how to build the best aquariums in the world that are rated in the top places across IAPLC and other prestigious uh, aquascaping contests. Look, the playlist is 11 hours long, not counting the last video, which is one and a half hours long in itself. The whole idea, as I mentioned in, at the beginning of this video, is to binge watch them, like listening to a longer audiobook, for example. You can do it in a weekend. I'm sure you'll have a good time. Thanks for visiting the Green Aqua YouTube channel. Thanks for the support, and I wish you good luck in your aquascaping. Stay with us for our next videos as well. Cheers.